just a fungus therefore. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Um, I'm not presenting any of my own work here, this really is just a report back on work done by CABI for us. There are two rust fungi on Lantana. There is both the Prospodium tuberculosum and then there's Plexinia lantani. This, um, this comes from work that was CABI did for Australia. Australia in the past had Prospodium uh, tested and released there. The reason why they went for Prospodium first was twofold. Firstly, it's only been recorded on Lantana and nothing else, whereas Paxinia lantani has been recorded on numerous plant species, including species on both Urbanaceae and uh, Lamiaceae. Secondly, Prospodium occurs within the subtropical regions of Brazil, whereas Paxinia lantani on the more tropical region. So in other words, it was assumed that Prospodium would be more suitable for release in Australia. They did the testing, they released it. Um, it's there, it's working, but it is restricted to only two of the more common forms in and around Brisbane. Um, it's not spreading onto other forms, therefore it's very limited impact. So they then got Cabby to start testing Paxinia um, to see whether it could be a specific, because there were some indications from the field that although the species is recorded from a very broad range of, of hosts, that they could well be host-specific physiological races within the species. So Australia paid for CABI, CABI started testing. I heard about this and I thought, well, it's a brilliant opportunity. We pay a little bit of money and it really wasn't much money. This is a very cheap um, exercise. CABI has tested some plants for us in addition to all the plants that they tested for Australia. So this is the report back what you've got. One of the things to notice is that the HOSPEC testing was done with a very uh, select, or a, high, a selected isolate. It comes from Peru and it is more damaging than the typical Paxini lantani because it infects the stems, veins, etc. So in other words, it is more damaging to the plant, more sustained damage than just some lesions on the uh, leaves which we call a bit of foliation. The work was done by sorry, the work was done by Sarah Thomas, I'm only a male, I can't do two things at once, you see. Um, with Carol Ellison as well. Um, so just quickly to do what they found, they inoculated plants, standard inoculation, very high levels of inoculum used as is typical of post testing with pathogens. They used this rating scale, um, zero being absolutely nothing seen on the plants, no symptoms, nothing, no cause of anything. A one would be that there's chlorosis, in other words a yellowing. Um, or necrosis, in other words, little dead patches. That would indicate that the pathogen has tried to penetrate and then there's an active defense mechanism that's kicked in to stop it from being, um, uh, to stop it in its track. Then just very weakly susceptible, in other words, you get very small restricted lesions. A three would be slightly bigger and your four would be those normal big lesions as I showed you before. Um, so the very first thing they did was they tested a whole range of Lantani biotypes. Lantana biotypes. Most of these are from Australia, but they included uh, ones from various regions of the world, including the native range, a couple of other. And this is the range that they found. So you see, <laughs> you see, it's impossible. Just can't multitask us guys, you're useless. <laughs> okay, so you see it's side and middle, I mean it's just too beyond us. So as you can see within uh, Lantana of the various biotypes, around about 40% of them were highly susceptible, the range of others. Um, one of the things that they did was they then looked at these and with a lower inoculum levels to see what would happen. 
Um, and these ones where there was chlorosis and a little bit, they actually then didn't show any symptoms, there was nothing. In other words, it's only the very high inoculum loads that enabled some infection to happen. South African forms that were included, there were six different ones, two of which were highly susceptible. So it's about a third. So in other words, this rust fungus would attack at least a number of our forms. Um, we don't have to worry about that. These are the plants that they tested for Australia. Um, I've simply marked a few in green. These are South African plants, and down there goes are a couple of our lipias. Of all of, of all of these plants, those that I've got in red are the only ones that showed any symptoms. And as you can see, two of them, there was chlorosis necrosis. In other words, there was some attempt of penetration, but the host simply zapped that. Um, so it's, those plants are immune. These, two, these three, so that's two different varieties of one plant and then phyla. Um, there was a little bit of sporulation. Again, this is at the usual high inoculum doses using post testing. They tried uh, to lower, they did it, ran a test with different levels of inoculum. And again, as soon as the amount of inoculum was reduced, there was absolutely no symptoms at all. In other words, the specific isolate that they're testing for all these plants for Australia is completely host-specific, only attacking Montana, Camara, and nothing else. Um, and they tested plants within the uh, Bourbonaceae, Lamiaceae, and then a number of related families as well. Um, So in total, they tested 16 different species of Bourbonaceae for the Aussies and 27 from other families. For South Africans, I've kept the same color scheme. So the ones in green were tested for the Australians and they also did a double batch for us. Um, and then a couple of other plants. As you can see, again, most of them, there was absolutely no symptoms whatsoever. Interestingly, Lentona rugosa, for the Australians, there was no symptom at all, whereas with us, they got a little bit of chlorosis. But again, that simply indicates that the plant actively resisted. It is immune. It's not a host. Um, again, Phylonodiflora for the Australians didn't show anything, whereas in the test with us, it came up. Phyloconescence again, um, and then another Privia. Phyla and Privia, of course, are aliens. They're not native to South Africa at all. So in total, there are 49 different species that have been tested, none of which are actually susceptible to the isolate that has been tested. And we can therefore conclude that this is a highly host specific um, isolate and I would like to um, apply for permission to release in the future. Thank you. I was instructed not to waffle and I think I managed to do that. <laughs> Thanks very much, Alan. Um, yeah, it's very nice to have an, uh, uh, an agent that is no specific like this, makes life very, very straightforward. Does anyone have any questions for, for Alan? Later afternoon. Must be, yeah. Sorry. Uh, excuse my naivety. How uh, readily do fungi change or evolve. Um, so could this biotype change in a couple of generations? The risk of it changing is less than insects changing. Okay. <laughs> the, the interaction is much, much closer between the plant and the, um, and the fungus than it is for, because it's at the, it's very, very close on the molecular level rather than just a great big jumping jaws level. And we certainly have only that biotype that will come in. Yeah. 
we are we're only looking at that and the caveat selected it for Australia because it is more damaging than the normal or the other any other isolates that they looked at. So I think just that one that we're looking to bring in. Hildegard. I don't know, how much value would it be to control only two of the um, gross forms of Maltana? We have, I don't know, what number? That was, Are they the two main ones? That was two of the six that we supplied them. Um, it was quite a long time ago that we supplied, so I'm not sure whether those were main ones. It was simply showing that a number of our forms are susceptible. How many of all of our forms are susceptible, we don't know yet, because we haven't tested them, obviously. But if a third of all of our forms are susceptible, possibly nearly half if we go with the 40% of the Australian, etc., it suggests that we'll get it's a lot more than just two. Uh, I, can, I suppose I can do it from here. Right. Um, in my area of responsibility, I've released seven different agents on Lantana, and they don't survive there because our winters are too dry and too cold. But these are insects. Uh, uh, in your opinion, do you think they'd stand a better chance of surviving up there? At the dry northwest, I don't know. I'm, I've never, I haven't worked with this fungus. So I can't get a gut feeling. Um, I suppose that because it is more associated with tropical climates, it probably would require more humid um, rather than out in the dry northwest. I don't know. You can try it anyway. But yeah, well, this is the thing. As you know, with Lantan, we have to hoi everything against it in the hope that something works. So it's the only way to go with Lantana. Yeah. Um, I'm Philip. Uh, is there, just as a follow up to uh, Hildegard's question, <coughs> would there be other biotypes of fungus that would have her specificity on some of the other varieties of Lantana? Then? Different isolates would have different host ranges within the uh, Lantana biotypes, yes. And are there plans to test those? Or no. no. Um, we're just piggybacking on the Australians. So when the they Australians, basically when the Australians test the next one, we'll piggyback again? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the, the cost of this is equivalent to about three months salary plus cost of a researcher. It's very cheap. So it's worthwhile doing. Well, it's, is it sensible for us to test the next one? If it works. If one works, then there's nothing wrong with going out and getting more. Let's see if this one works. Okay. Thanks very much, Helen.